Swadhisthana. The water element is transmuted into vapor by the fire of the Manipura chakra and becomes the rarefied air of the Anahara chakra. The Anahata chakra is the unstruck or pre-existing sound which is not made by physical or mechanical means. This air then transforms into the subtle etheric quality of Vishuhada chakra, which is said to be the final and most subtle veil separating consciousness from the radiant space, Akasha of the Ajna chakra, the location of the all-seeing third eye. The unlocking of the Sahasrara chakra, the doorway at the top of the head, brings us into an experience which utterly transcends the temporal realm of the five elements. Sustained practice of this profound extension and integration of the breath, we may experience the subtle nervine pathways, the nadis, upon which this energetic essence of the breath travels. With the inner eye, we may perceive that these pathways are luminous fibers or filaments branching throughout our entire form. The energetic plexuses, the chakras, may in particular begin to shine and pulse with the effulgence of a flame that does not consume. Here we are entering into perception of the realms of the energy body, which is comprised of three subtle sheaths that are contiguous to the material form. These three are the vital, the emotive, and the intellectual sheaths. The fifth sheath represents an integrated totality. It is the sheath of the vital energy body that is composed of these filaments of consciousness known as the nadis. These are filaments that can be perceived by the inner eye by seeing the currents of prana channel, channeling through them with the pulsation of the breath. Absorption of prana into all five sheaths of the human organism is facilitated by the progressive cleansing of these subtle nadi channels. When the nadis are purified, the whole organism is saturated in prana. The health of the physical body and its reflection in the emotional and mentational states of animation is mirrored exactly in the relative luminosity of the vital energy body.
process of linking breathing and application of the bandhas to the integration of the five elements, we consciously intensify the connection of our inner world to that of the essential elements of the natural world. In this light, we may catch a glimpse of how the roots of yoga are embedded in ancient shamanism. The adept yogin here is extending her prana energetically beyond the bounds of the physical sheath to intercommunicate with the spirits of rock, water, fire, sky, plants and animals. First of all, our ecology states that any action that we take within the sphere of the natural world will definitely have multiple unforeseen reactions. This is the ripple effect of karma. Once we understand this, it requires great courage to act, but we may embolden ourselves with a discrimination rooted in the alignment of our intent with the heart of this magnificent being that some call by the name of Gaia, the planet Earth. The second law of ecology states that since all things intermingle and are interconnected, we cannot escape from the fact that any action taken has an effect on everything else within existence. If we are no longer willing to indulge in practices that toxify our own bodies and minds, why should we be willing to stand for societal agreements that allow individuals and corporations to heedlessly and needlessly dump poisons into the body of the earth? We may begin to study carefully our own present mode of existence in order to understand how we might reduce our footprint and so lessen the entropic impact that our first world lifestyle has upon the biosphere. We must become those new cultural creatives who seek out the sustainable pathways that will ensure the continuance of this awesome and mysterious gift of life that has been placed into our hands. Sustainability is about accepting that there are reasonable limits we must place 
on our resource consumption. We can't carry on having what we want, when we want it, all the time. Whatever frustration this may cause can be viewed as a manifestation of tapas, the fiery, devoted, impassioned discipleship of a committed yogic practitioner. This is how the boundless compassion of the new ecological yogin may be born. With consistent practice over an extended period of time, the Mula and Uddiyana Bandhas awaken a somatic and psychic consciousness known as the Shushumna Nadi, the central channel or axis of cosmic energy within the human body. The famed Kundalini serpent who lies coiled at the root of the spine is thus awakened and begins to rise. Kundalini energy is stored in the body and yet it is not limited to the body. Another way of saying this is that when the kundalini energy awakens, we experience the body in a way that blows asunder our previous perceptions of its limits. This boundless energy is innate within us. It is only blocked by our own temporal ignorance of it. The serpent is recognized as an ancient voice of earth wisdom within the diverse traditions of the ages. As this energy is activated through the central axis, we may then experience the flow of asana with tangible reference and deep sensation arising from the interior core of the body. Now we are not simply responding to the external actions and reactions of the surface, skin, and muscle, but rather moving, breathing, being from out of an awakened and energized core. Even the internal organs, the arteries and veins, and fundamentally even the marrow of the bones take on an integrative definition within the sensate experience of moving into and unfolding out of each asana from this core and into that vast empty space that lies in the stillness between each breath. The key to the mastery of the bandhas is the breath work. The integration of conscious breathing is the beginning and the end point of practice. In the advanced stages of this practice, to breathe is to engage the bandhas and the two actions become inseparable. With focused intent, the bandhas will eventually begin to breathe themselves. At the heart of the Kundalini experience is the awakening of somatic intelligence. There is a wisdom aspect to the instinct when it is made conscious. Vande Guru Nam Charanaravinde Sandarshita Swatma 
Sukhavabhode Nishweyase Jangale Kaya Mane Samsara Hala Hala Moha Shanti Abahu Purushakaram Shankya Chakrasi Taharinam Sahasra Shira Samshvetam Pranamami Patanjalim Back in the Wild West days, if a mountain man lost his way in the wilderness, as a last resort, he'd leave it to his horse to guide him back home, and very often the horse would know the way. Our body is that horse. There is also a compassion aspect to our instinct when it is made conscious. Our bodies partake of an absolute connection with all other beings, even while our ego selves are busy creating a rationality of separation. As the kundalini energy commences to awaken and is released from the root lock, this instinctual knowledge will begin to inform all one's states of daily attendance, of dreaming and waking and dreaming again. If one experiences the Supreme Being alive within oneself, then one is sure to experience that mysterious presence alive within everyone else. Shanti, 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 Ti. Om, Ah, Hum.